Here you have your future. It's your crystal ball. It's not a magic crystal ball. You can't actually see the future in it. But I hope through what I say today that I will help you to create a better future for yourselves. We've talked about all kinds of futures, but now what I want to share with you is your personal futures. I'll start with telling you a little story. Many years ago, I fainted at a party and it changed my life. I'd never fainted before. Shocking experience in itself. But I felt fine, I came to immediately and I felt fine afterwards. My wife insisted that I go for a CT scan afterwards, just in case, because I'd hit my head. And after her repeating that 15 times, I agreed and we went to the emergency room. I had the various tests, the doctor comes out and he says, you don't have any cranial damage. And I looked at my wife knowingly and I said, of course I knew that, you made me go here. He said, but you have cancer. So if I hadn't fainted, and if I hadn't listened to my wife, which I do completely now, I wouldn't be here today. So what is the message in all of this? The questions that I am going to address, basically, are what can you control in your life, and how do you create your own future? Whether you believe my life-saving event was chance, serendipity, or providential, it focuses on how we unbox our futures. How do any of us respond as a person to any event that determines our futures? As Gidrus was just saying, we can't control our futures, but we can control how we respond. An important part of this that I'm here to remind you of is that we all take our lives for granted. Every day we forget what a precious gift life is. And we should live each day as if it were our last, because you know what? One of these days will be right. So I ask you, what do you cherish? And does the way you live your life match what you cherish? I've learned to do that, and that's why I'm here. Let me talk a little bit about why we fail to create our futures. I coach executives in corporations, and I had a client a number of years ago. As I was interviewing him, he said, I've come to work on the same train every day, I've worked in the same office every day, and I've gone on home on the same train every day for 25 years. And then he said, and I hated every minute of it. And I went, oh! I, psychologists are supposed to be very balanced, but I didn't. So the question I ask him is the question I ask you now. Is that what you really want? What do you want? And how will you make it happen? Every day, we have an opportunity to create a different future. And if we don't use those opportunities, we will fail. So I encourage you, stop, think, and perhaps most important, feel. How would you change to create a better future? Speaking more about what happens to us each day that affects what will happen to us in the future. Think of something that happened to each of you in the past, good or bad, that shaped who you are today. And the question I pose to you is, did you shape it or did it shape you? My cancer did not shape me. It helped me shape my world today because I thought deeply, as I'm laying in a hospital bed after the surgery, that I could have succumbed to a fateful end, or I could decide to expand my world. And by the way, the major expansion of my world is Lietuva. And that is why today I feel conastic. <laughs> it's true. So let me talk a little bit about how our personalities shape our futures. And I'll just give you a couple of examples. And I would encourage you to ask yourself these questions as I'm describing it. Are you an optimist or a pessimist? If you're an optimist, you expect positive things to happen, and they become what we often call self-fulfilling prophecies. Likewise, if you are a pessimist, you create negative self-fulfilling prophecies. That all helps create your future. Are you bold or fearful? If you're bold, you make mistakes, 
but you open yourself to new worlds. If you are fearful, you find safety in the status quo and don't make the changes you may need to make. Are you intuitive or analytic? Both are valuable qualities. If you're intuitive, you go with that which helps you move most quickly. If you're analytic, you need everything to make sense and plan everything in an orderly fashion. They're both paths to an end, but they do lead to different directions. Next, are you assertive or passive? If you're assertive, you push things forward. If you're passive, you wait for things to happen. And as a result, your future happens to you. Every aspect of your personality shapes your future. So why are we afraid of the future? And we all are. Well, first of all, because it's the least controllable aspect of our lives, okay? We never know how long we're going to live. We never know exactly what is going to happen every day. Uh, a week ago when I came here, I developed a bronchitis. That's why I'm singing in a different tone today. Um, and as each day approached coming to TEDx, I was thinking, am I going to be able to talk here? Well, fortunately, th with lots of tea, I am. So how does thinking about the future occupy us? Well, we all fantasize. We think about, well, maybe we'll do this, maybe we'll do that. From some of those fantasies come plans, which are important, as long as we realize the biblical expression that man plans and God laughs. Our images of the future are shaped by our experiences of the past. So what is our personal future? And it's the most tantalizing of all questions because we don't know how long we will live or when we will die. But we should live with an assumption that we have a lot of time ahead of us. And we don't know what unexpected events like my cancer will change the trajectory of our lives. Think for a moment, how long do you believe you will live? And why do you believe that? I will tell you, when I was in graduate school, more years ago than any of you can count, I was asked to, because it was a doctorate in psychology, to complete my own death certificate, my obituary as it was. I predicted that I would live till the age of 56. Well, guess what? I'm almost 74. That prediction was based upon my unhappy worldview at the time. If anybody has been in a doctoral program, you know how easily that creates an unhappy worldview. So, let me tell you what some of the researchers told us about what we can expect. And it basically is around the stages of adult development. In our 20s, and some of you may be in your 20s, it's certainly a young audience. I found one person that was close to a contemporary of mine. In your 20s, it is all about striving finishing your education, going on for further education, creating a career for yourself, and experimenting. And by the way, to me, that's the most important part of 20s. People in their 20s often think, I gotta have this figured out. I'm already an adult. No, that's wrong. What I encourage people to do is experiment throughout their 20s. For that matter, to experiment throughout their lives, but particularly in your 20s, okay? Then we move to the 30s, and that's a period that we see as great growth, as a very procreative period, that is both literally in terms of building a family for many of us, and figuratively in terms of building our careers. Then we come to our 40s. Our 40s is called midlife, and it's also become told, called becoming one's own person. Why is that? Because it seems to be human nature, no matter what your background, intellect, whatever, that you stack back and look at the first 20 years of your adult life and say, what is this all about? What am I doing and is it the right thing? Am I my own person or am I just following a set of rules and guidelines? If you successfully resolve those questions into your 50s, you begin to live life much more on your own terms. And as a result, you can be more true to yourselves and do what you want with less fear because fear is the enemy. There's no question about that. Then we reach our 60s, and 60s is a period of making choices. Major choices include, do we want to retire or continue to work? I've chosen continuing to work. 
Uh, and what haven't we done that we want to do while we can? And that choice was mainly driven by, one, my cancer, and two, by Lietuva. I say that my body lives in Chicago, but my heart lives in Lietuva. Now we reach the 70s, my decade. And I can only tell you it's a period of great, great richness. Why is that? After all these years of life, you should and you will develop a level of perspective that you've never had before. And you will feel your truest sense of self. So how do people build the future? The first question is how far in time you're willing to look. I don't mean that you have to plan every day, every year, every decade going forward. But a simple way of understanding it is how is your current age different from what you expected it to be? Did you expect to be doing one thing and you're doing another? Did you expect to have achieved a certain thing and you've either achieved more or less? In other words, is your life better or worse than you expected and why? Now, the important part about creating your future is by looking at the patterns of our behavior in the past. You know, Einstein said, at least supposedly he was the one that said, insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. Unless we change our patterns, then we will always behave in the future as we've behaved in the past. So I would ask you to think about, how do you usually treat people? And the corollary to that, how do they usually treat you? What are your relationships like? Are you happy with them? How have they evolved over time? And how do they need to evolve? I see three types of response to moving into the future. One is resistance. I don't want to go there. I don't want to think about it. People who say my high school years or gymnasium years were the best years of my life. I think that's one of the saddest statements that exist. Another is stagnation. Well, this is working out okay for me, so I might as well just continue down the same path. Uh, once again, then your future is shaping you. You are not shaping your future. And the third response is embracing the future. What's ahead? How exciting can it be? I can tell you because I am where you will eventually be that if you embrace the future, it leads to wonderful change. So what more can I tell you from a personal perspective about shaping your future? First of all, and I say this without ego, I'm one of the happiest people you will ever meet. I wasn't always, okay? And I say this knowing that the majority of my future is in the past, okay? But knowing all of that past enriches every one of my days. So I'm not saying that life is always happy or easy. Mine certainly hasn't been. But what I want to tell you is how I have learned happiness. The first thing I can say is that it has been by a strong, long, and loving relationship. The second has been by building a family. Not that I uh, expect everyone should build a family, although given some of the population changes in Lietuva, I think you should work hard on that. Uh, by taking risks, okay? If you don't risk anything, you think you're not gonna lose, but actually you lose the most. By doing what you love, I was very fortunate to discover, and it wasn't immediately, it was in my late 30s, what it was that I truly love in terms of my career. And it has so much carried me along with a wind of absolute joy that um, I encourage you to that in every way. By finding new passions throughout life. I first came to Lietuva in the 90s. Um, I've been coming here regularly since then. Um, and I will tell you, and I don't do this to curry favor with the audience, Lietuva is my passion, okay? And I do so much while I'm here. Another concept is a Hebraic concept. It's called tikkun olam, and it means healing or repairing the world. So much of the joy that I get out of life is by doing things in my small way that can help make the world a better place. So a few days ago, I contributed greatly to the opening of the Samuel Bach Art Museum 
in Vilnius. And through that opening, this artist who portrays the absolute pain of the Holocaust, much as like the brown eye, blue eye presentation that we saw before, will stand as a permanent monument for not just the Lithuanian people, but I believe the people of the world to not make that mistake again. By forgiveness, it's one of the hardest lessons I ever learned. All of us experience where somebody does us some wrong, okay? You don't forget that. It's impossible to do that. But learning how to forgive is critical. And why is it critical? Because um, unless we forgive the person, we do more pain to ourselves than we do to the other person. If we think about revenging ourselves against the other person, we're constantly dealing with that pain. If we let go of that and go into the future by forgiveness, then we don't experience that. Another thing that makes me so happy is by sharing what I have and what I know with others. This being one example of it. Hopefully, it is helpful to you in some way. Also, by controlling what I can and accepting what I can't. And then finally, by letting go. You can't change the past. The, all you can do is learn from it and change yourself. Viktor Frankl, who was a famous psychiatrist who survived the concentration camp, said, everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. In other words, to choose one's own way. So how should you be uh, changing your futures? First, by doing what you're afraid to do. Second, by making immediate change. If this is the straight path ahead of you, and if you make a change right now, over time, that will be a huge change. If you wait until this time to make the change, it will be a very small change. And by engagement, not retirement. I have nothing against retirement, but what I do feel is the root word in retirement is tire. And no one wants to be tired of their lives. So continual engagement is critical to this process. How do we make our futures as positive as possible? We acknowledge that change is part of life. We accept change and our emotions about it. And we do the best we can to reframe the situation, to reframe the situation to see the positive. So how do I want to leave you? Well, I'll leave you with a suggestion slash recommendation. Whether right now or after today, Think about something you want to change about your life, big or small. Write it down. Put it where you will see it on a daily basis. Tell someone close to you to create accountability for it and put it in your calendar to review every year. This will motivate you, and if you continue to do it, it will drive your future possible. Then lastly, and probably most important, I wish you a very happy future. Thank you.